So, one more thing about units, something that you'll need throughout the course. You won't just need to convert units, and you won't just need to get a physical intuition for units. You know, how long is that? How many meters? Is that a meter? Is that a meter? Uh, how, uh, how much mass is a kilogram or a gram or a 10 gram or something like that? And uh, not only will you need an intuition and conversion, but you'll have to use it, and you can use it as a tool to check your equations to make sure they work. And of course, in a textbook or if your professor writes down an equation, it's probably right. Uh, but on the board, you make mistakes. And when you write things down, you can make mistakes. So you can always check. By checking, you're not just checking whether it's right, you're also getting familiar because this is very new to you. So if you check equations on every check equations, every time you see a new equation, explore the units. You're going to find it very useful, particularly when you get to electricity and magnetism and things like that. So units are going to be a critical guideline for building intuition and avoiding mistakes. So today, uh, in this little mini lecture, we're going to talk about units and equations. Uh, we'll talk about dimensions versus units, real briefly. Then we're going to just talk about checking units or dimensions, you can do it either way, uh, of equations. Make sure that it's at least possibly right, not certainly wrong. We're going to add and subtract, and we'll find we get some nonsense there. Or we can create consistency and say, OK, at least they're consistent. We can multiply and divide, and we can sometimes get some useless stuff. And some things that are fine, mixed units, which I mentioned before, some kinematics examples. So that's what we'll do. So quickly, uh, the idea of dimensions and units. So dimension, by dimension we just mean uh, like space or length or the separation between things is given a symbol of L often in these brackets. We're not going to use it very much, but sometimes you'll see it, so that's fine. Uh, time, the dimension of time, uh, whatever that means, right? Something you would think about, uh, is capital T. The dimension of mass is capital M. And of course, they have different units. Common units for length, of course, would be uh, the American common units, inch, foot, yard, mile. Uh, and those are all fine. Uh, why don't we switch over in America? Well, a lot of equipment's been tooled to this, these kind of specifications, too, so it can be expensive to switch over. Um, and there are some reasons, but it's fine. Uh, we can have centimeters, meters, kilometers, nanometers, anything. Any length would be uh, a reference unit. Uh, but still, all these things talk about a length or a separation a distance. Time, of course, uh, second, minutes, and hours are a common thing. A year is kind of a strange thing, we'll talk about that, because how many days is a year? Not really 365, so 365 and a quarter is closer. Um, but a month is really crazy, it's not a very good unit of time. Mass, of course, there's the gram, and the kilogram is the common unit in our metric systems. In the British system, there's a unit called a slug, which is one of my favorite units, because it's like sluggish, massive inertia. It's great. Uh, you won't see it much, but in engineering, sometimes you do. And then you can combine the units. You can, of course, have volume, which has the dimension of a length times a length times a length. Uh, and then any of these units, right? Um, mass, volume, density. Whoa, hey, what did I do there? I don't know what I was thinking. See that? It was wrong. <laughs> it was down here, I think. Mass, volume, density. It's the mass per volume. Length cubed. Right? And again, those could be whatever units you find useful. Some combining of the units. Fine. Speed, of course, would be some length per time. Distance per time, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, kilometers per second, meters per second etc., which we'll explore. So that's what we mean. We can check in general dimensions or uh, put it into specific amounts, reference amounts or units. 
All right, so let's check this out now. Let's uh, see what we can do here. I'm just going to check out my little thing and say, all right, checking units or equations. Consider this. We talked last time about the fact that 12 is equal to 1. A nonsense thing. Someone sees that and they say, that's ridiculous. You say, oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm being sloppy. I didn't tell you that I'm talking about 12 inches is equal to one foot. Don't worry about significant figures. If your mind's going there, we're going to get that next time. So, uh, What might I be talking about? I mean, are these the same amounts physically? Yes. 12, the number 12 is not the same as the number 1, but they're physically the same amount. Are they the same thing? Not necessarily. For example, I could say that this laptop is 12 inches. And I kind of know that because I know that that span for me is 8 inches. And this is 8 inches, and that's 8 inches. So that's what I bring to the store. And I know that that's 4 inches. So I got this laptop is 8 plus 4, good enough, about 12 inches. So maybe I could say this is the width of my laptop. And maybe there's an ant on my laptop, and it walks from one side to the other. So this could be the distance distance an ant walks. So those are two different things. There's the ant walk, and then there's the physical width. But they are the same amounts, and so I can use this symbol equals. Now, once I've set that up, I go, all right, fine. Uh, I can play with it, of course, algebraically. With math, you can move things around any way you want. The meaning starts getting lost. Like, OK, the ant walked across my laptop. But now I can do math, and I can go, oh, 12 inches minus one foot is equal to what? Physically, these are the same. So I'm going to write an answer of zero. Now, what does that equation mean? I don't, I don't know. I mixed it up. I can't take this number. My, I can't do 12 minus 1, right, because it's not 11. So in order to work it, obviously, even though this has got a dimension of length and a dimension of length, in order to combine the amounts, the numbers, we have to make the units consistent. We can put them both into feet, or we can put them both into inches. And that's fine. So in terms of meaning, it's fine. In terms of actually combining the numbers, not, not so good. So uh, there's an example where you've got to be put it into consistent units in order to kind of work with the numbers. Or not, you know, but then you just have to leave it like that. OK, so that's point number one. Here's another point. Let's take another look at example. Suppose, uh, suppose I say, hey, what's three feet plus two hours? Oh, well, that's five, right? Well, three plus two is five. Boy, we're talking, again, big thing about physics and, and sciences and engineering is these numbers, these equations have meaning. In math, it's much broader. You can have math apply to whatever, and then that's got to apply to those rules of economics or whatever you're using your mathematics for. Here, we're using uh, math or physics, engineering, science type things. So three feet plus two hours, I put the units in, and all of a sudden, I don't, I don't what does that mean, equal? It equals nonsense. OK, so why? Because you cannot add or subtract quantities with different, different uh, dimensions or units. Which they have the same dimension, 12 inches minus 1 foot. I can write that, and still, it's not nonsense, but in order to do anything, I've got to put it into units. But length and time, you know, good luck. Yes, relativity, we play with that a little bit, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. Um, and it's still consistent in this way. So be aware that if your equation somehow, if you look at the units, you can look at units or dimensions either way, and they're not consistent this way, forget about it, it's wrong. If they are consistent, still could be wrong, but at least you know you're, you're sort of OK. All right, so there's that one. What if I take, let's go over here, and I take 
three p and divide it by uh, two seconds. Now I'm taking the dimension of length and dividing by the dimension of time. But of course I can then do that, that's three halves, or 1.5 feet per second. Now I need a physical intuition, that's a foot. A foot, again, is my laptop length, so that's one and a half, uh, three feet every two seconds. So that's 1,001, 1,000, that's pretty slow, right? Maybe that's a running amp, I don't know. Uh, but that's fine. So when I multiply and divide, you can mix. You know, that's fine. But what is the resulting meaning? Let me give you an example. In calculus, you take the integral of functions. So suppose I take an integral of a function, or just any product, a function of position. It's a position function. It's written in terms of time. dt. Remember, you don't need those brackets, but that's implied that you're integrating. We've got some position times time. What would the units be? The units may be meters times seconds. The dimension would be a length times a time. What's the meaning? I don't know. If you gave me a function, I could do this and come up with an answer mathematically that I don't know what the meaning is. So we have to be careful. Now, meters divided by second, ah, it's a speed of some sort. A meter times second, I don't know. I would call that useless. Suppose now, however, I do a function of time that is velocity. Well, that could be, for example, meters per second times second, giving me meters. And in that case, it's not useless. It's the change in position, for example. And you'll see this much more in just a bit. So we have to, we can use the units very powerfully, very simply, if you get into the habit of it, it's a quick check, and that development, that awareness, is critical, critical for your, um, your development as a, an engineer or scientist of any sort. Okay, um, so the last little bit here that we're going to do is I'm going to show you, and we'll be doing this throughout the course, you should do it as you read just habitually check units. So for example, kinematics, the description of motion, which we're getting into right away. Describe motion. I'll just throw up some equations. Don't worry about it too much. I'll write them in a careful notation that will help your understanding rather than the shorthand kind of sloppy notation that people often write. For example, if I write this equation, delta x from, say, 1 to 2 states uh, is velocity at 1 times delta t time, change in time uh, squared, plus 1 half acceleration time, change in time, that's from 1 to 2, 1 to 2. You don't even know this equation yet, presumably. And you can say, hey, huh, I wonder what that, if that makes sense. Well, I can check my units, and I can, again, do this in dimension form, L, or just pick some units. Like, this is meters. And in order to this be equal to that, it's got to have the same kind of dimensions here. This would be a meter per second times second squared. So that would be, let me put an arrow here. And I'll put it both ways, they've got a match. Uh, that means meters times second, but that's meter times second, that's meter. This equation is nonsense. I've written it incorrectly. This is wrong. I don't even have to know what it means. I just do, do need to know the units of it. So if I get rid of that, I get rid of that, 
I get rid of that. Well, that's okay. Now, it doesn't tell me whether there's a two out here or a one half out here or not. So I'm not absolutely sure, but uh, it does do that. And over here, you find that this is meters per second squared, or meter per second per second times second. Again, getting meter per second, that's no good. That's got to be squared, squared times a second squared, anyway, that's going to give me a meter, and life is good. So you can use it to check your units, we'll be doing it throughout, and uh, it's really not that hard, and it's a habit, and uh, I recommend you start doing it uh, with every equation that you read and write, and you get very fast at doing it in a, in a split second. Okay, cool.